Welcome back to theCUBE, everyone. This is Lisa Martin, live in Miami. I'm at IFS Unleashed 2022. We've had a great day talking with IFS executives, customers, partners. We're going to be having another great conversation next. I have two guests here on set with me. Sarah Nicastro joins us, the founder of Future Field of Service and VP of Customer Engagement at IFS. And Rule Rentmeester is the VP of Digital Transformation at Munters. Welcome to the program. Thanks Thank for you. having us. So here we are surrounded by about 1,500 or so people. The buzz in here is Loud. People are ready to come back. <laughs> They're just ready to come yes. back, have these conversations with their peers and their colleagues at IFS, which is great to, to see and to feel, right? Sarah, let's start with you, your role, founder, future of field service. Talk to me about what that is and what the genesis was. Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of what I do uh, is actually what you're doing, um, and interviewing folks, creating content. Uh, I was in the media before I joined IFS uh, almost four years ago. Uh, in service specifically. So service, you've probably heard a lot today about moment of service. Service is a huge focus area for IFS. Uh, and Future of Field Service is a thought leadership resource that IFS uh, allowed me to come on board and create, um, not only for customers, but for the broader service community. Uh, so I write articles related to service trends, I host a weekly podcast. Uh, over time uh, with the company, as I got to uh, engage with more and more customers, um, and there's so much value in them connecting with one another. You see that here, like you said, people are so excited to be together, um, but fostering those connections within our customer community, um, allowing them to get to know each other, share best practices, uh, as well as making sure that we're bringing the voice of customer always into IFS. So that's what I do on the customer engagement side. I love it. The voice of the customer is invaluable. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I, of all the conversations that I've had today, it's so clear how strategic and strong the relationships are that IFS has with its customers. Rule, talk to us a little bit about Munchers. You're a customer, and, and talk about the relationship that you've established with IFS and the team. Yeah, with pleasure. So, um, Munchers is a Swedish company. Um, we are a global leader in sustainable air treatment solutions. So think about uh, dehumidification, cooling, but in big industrial uh, applications. Um, I am the VP of digital services, or di digital transformation. Prior to that, until very recently, I was a VP of services. Um, and you know, we started that servitization roadmap five years ago, six years ago. Uh, we work very closely with IFS. We're implementing a new apps uh, version as an ERP for, for Muntus. And so that servitization moving from traditional services to, to outcome-based services, has the digital aspect, so my move is a is a natural uh, natural flow with that. How old is how long has Munters been in business? It's uh, founded in 1955. Oh wow! Uh, it's a Swedish company, quite traditional still in their manufacturing and delivering services, but the shift is there. Talk to me about that shift and how IFS has been an accelerant of that. It's challenging for legacy businesses to evolve and transform. Obviously, in this day and age, you don't have a choice, but. Talk to us about the digital transformation of the business so that you can deliver more to your customers and how IFS has been foundational to that. Yeah, so, so that servitization roadmap, eventually it is something that our customers want. Uh, we, we captured it, customers want remote management, they want connected devices, but that alone will not bring you servitization you need to have your strong foundation in the back with a good process, a good system and uh, that can support that process and that's where IFS came in for us. We are a long time IFS user, so we, we are on the 8 version in, in Europe of App 8, huh? but we are doing a new implementation to 10 and this way a global implementation with clean data that needs to be cleansed, new processes, end-to-end -end processes, and so IFS is our partner to support us in this uh, in, in this roadmap. Along with other developments and, and things uh, IFS is doing, think about remote management, something we've implemented during COVID, and that perfectly aligns with that road towards uh, servitization. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, uh, Rule and I were on a panel discussion uh, earlier today with two other customers, um, and all different industries, uh, but when we said, what is the focus of the business, they all said, 
servitization or outcomes-based services, me too, me too, me too, right? So it's a, a journey that a lot of our customers are on, looking at how they differentiate through service, how they, um, you know, move away from being a provider of products or things and uh, someone that their customers can trust to provide peace of mind, uptime, outcomes, experiences, things like that. It's all about outcomes and we're hearing more and more about servitization. It's not a new concept. No. It's, it's relative, the term is, is somewhat new, newer to some of these conversations, but we're seeing a lot of businesses, especially in light of COVID, pivot in that direction and they need a partner that they can trust like IFS to help them get there. Sarah, talk, let's talk more about customer engagement and what are some of the, the different facets that need to be considered. You guys are, IFS is, has expertise in five verticals, which mm -hmm. I love the, the vertical specialization there. Um, but talk to us about some of those facets of, that make customer engagement successful. Yeah, so I think uh, you're absolutely right. So we have our five, uh, industries that we focus heavily on. Um, and that is where most of our customer engagement has uh, and does reside, right? So each industry has um, its own group of, of customers that get together, weigh in on how IFS is innovating, what they need from the company in their respective industries, et cetera. Uh, what I'm focused on, and, and probably a lot of it is just based on my background, um, I mentioned on the panel there was a lot of head nods and me too, me too. That's because there are also uh, elements of um, innovation and change that are happening across industries that our customers care a lot about. So what I'm working on at the moment is introducing sort of another layer of customer engagement where we're also fostering those cross industry, more innovation centered um, conversations so that we can you know, not only better understand what our customers are focused on there, but also allow them to connect and learn from one another. I love that, there's so much power and potential. Rule, talk to us about that from your perspective, the, the opportunity, you mentioned, Sarah, the panel that you guys were on earlier today, but talk to us about the opportunity that IFS is giving you to engage with your peers in other industries, but also for you to learn and get takeaways from them. That's got to be pretty unique from a technology partner perspective. That, that definitely is, and the future of field service is one of those four uh, where, where I think we share so much knowledge, not just while we are sitting together and having our talks with, um, with Sarah, also individually we connected with each other. Um, it's even companies that are also Swedish based, like Tetra Pak, et cetera, so th there is kind of bonds that we, we, we can see, but it's true, we are learning from each other also because some are maybe a bit more advanced than others in this area, so we can learn, not just around how they do their processes, how they find technicians on the market, which is very scarce today and very difficult, how do you retain them, but also what are you experiencing during your implementation? Yeah? What is your partner, that are, are you, what are pitfalls that you've discovered since you were there? Would you go to cloud or would you still wait in app 10? So we share that knowledge to, e to each other and we learn a lot from each other, which is something I like. I also like the fact that um, IFS is a very customer-centric company, as we mentioned before. The fact that you have changed advisory boards where the voice of the customer is going to be important, where you can feed back, or IFS feeds back trends and, and things they see going forward, but where we can also say, but would it not be better that the user interface for a technician who just wants to do this and this and this is simpler than what you offer today? So, so it makes, it's a, it's a win-win situation for, for both it's of us. It's a collaboration, yeah, it, it I like should it. be. And, you know, uh, they're, I'm really passionate about what I do, but to be on sessions with a group of customers and have them say, I'm going to call you later because I want to know more about how you did this or can we connect and to see those connections happen, um, it's great to have events like this and, and you know they have been on hold, but ideally happen every year, year and a half. Um, but to keep those connections going continuously is, is really important to me. Well the innovations that IFS can, can spurn from just those connections alone mm -hmm. is infinite, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can, your mind can wander with all of the different things that can come out of that. So talk a little bit more about, you know, we, we, we often talk about the voice of the customer, it's incredibly powerful. I always think it's the most objective opinion, but what, one of the things that I think I was learning earlier today is it's not just about the voice of the customer, it's taking the insights from those customers into the company, into the development of the technologies to then be able to fuel 
customer driven changes. Mm -hmm. Talk about mm -hmm. that and, and as a, one of the focuses that IFS has. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, not only we, but our customers are, are talking a lot more about uh, outside in innovation, right? It, an inside out model does not work today. Uh, and, and so, you know, that's really what the focus is. And, and it's, there's so many parallels between what we're focused on, what our customers are focused on, right? Um, and, and so I think, uh, Voice of the customer, it, it's always good to have a, a, a quantitative measure where you're, you're doing surveys, you're understanding, you know, what is your NPS, how do your customers feel, are they satisfied, et cetera. Um, but it's also very important to have, you know, more of a qualitative or a, a more intimate forum to have those deeper discussions, to really get into some of the details that, to Rule's point, can then influence Hmm, okay, well, we haven't quite thought about it that way. Uh, the more you have those discussions, the more you can notice what those common challenges or opportunities are, so that when you are putting effort into our own evolution and modernization, we can make sure that's geared toward the, the impact our customers need. Right, that's critical. The, the, it's all about outcomes. Customers need to move faster and faster and faster these days, right? Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that was in very short supply during the pandemic was patience and tolerance, and I don't know that it's going to come back. I think we are. <laughs> I've never had it. Personally. <laughs> <laughs> I had a little bit of it, <laughs> but I think you know the consumerization of tech. We expect these experiences in our professional world to be as easy as going on Amazon and buying whatever we want. We also want the brands to know enough about us where it's not creepy, but make it personalized yeah. to some degree. Have that intimate relationship with me that's good enough to get me the outcome that I'm looking for. We all have that in mm -hmm. our personal lives, but it flows into our business lives as well. So you're dealing with customers that probably are, have gotten more demanding as a result. Yeah. I think you're absolutely right. And at the same time, not all customers want to go into that entire outcome-based direction. So, but what I like about it is, if you can do outcome-based service, you can also accommodate those customers and the service they want without having the outcome. Think about as a lay-based service or, or those kind of things, because your organization and your, your, your systems and your processes are ready to, to do this. It's actually part of it. So that voice of the customer is for us important enough to know it's not one thing that we should create. It's not one service offering. It depends on what kind of customers you are. Look at data center customers, for which we do a lot of cooling. They are scared to hell that that thing would be brought down because it would endanger their entire data center. Right. They don't want to connect, but they want to have certain data that they can see inside their environment and that they can pass on to us. So you need to accommodate all those things. So your voice of customer is extremely important. You mentioned, Lisa, that uh, we've been talking about servitization for quite a while, right? And it's because it involves so many layers of change within a business, right? And, and so it's it's really more of a journey, a continuum. Um, and you know, to Rule's point, companies need to be able to address what their customers need at different points. Um, some may want to remain on a CapEx model and some may want to move to an outcomes model. We also need to be able to address what our customers need on a bit of a continuum, you know, which is what we're working toward with IFS Cloud is, is being able to you know, meet people where they are and, and give them what they need that can grow with them as they grow with, with their customers. And that's absolutely essential for a good partnership and that makes, that makes for those moments of service mm -hmm. to yes. happen at the end of the day to that end user, who, whether it's an airline or, or whatnot. Um, IFS Cloud, we only have a couple minutes left, but IFS Cloud was launched only 18 months ago and I was in the keynote this morning and, I, and Christian was actually here on the show with me too. 400,000 plus users in 18 months. It, it's growing pretty quickly. Yeah. What's been some of the feedback from the customer side and we'll get your perspective yeah. as well. I don't have Cloud yet. So um, we are implementing App 10. Why? Because we signed up with IFS two years ago. At that time it was not yet there. Um, and we think now, Let's first do this and then we can do move to cloud. But it's not that we will not move to cloud. It's something we will, we will do eventually. I like the fact that IFS thinks of having everything in one rather than having the different pieces, which made it also for me personally very difficult to make a choice. Do I go for the standalone version of the field service or do I take the one that is embedded in the ERP? 
what is the difference between those two? Is there functionalities that I'm going to miss if I choose one or the other? Uh, so the fact that it will be all together, it makes it easier also to add on later on, like customer service or the customer portal or those kind of things. So I, I like that, that concept. So I'm very curious to hear from peers here that have done the implementation like Tetraplac. How's it going? What is their feeling? I'm very curious. Yeah, well I imagine at this kind of event you're going to learn just that. Yep. <laughs> you were going to say something there. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, you know, I, I think it, it's a really good point that you mentioned um, with all of the things we're used to in our consumer lives, we want simplicity. Having complex technology stacks is at odds with delivering simple to the customer, right? And so, so that's the goal, really. Um, I was just in a session before this with, with Yotin, uh, who's on the journey to Evergreen with, with IFS Cloud. Um, and it's really the idea of you know, eliminating some of the uh, manual effort that exists in maintaining a system, um, making it a lot easier and faster for organizations to adopt innovation that comes out, um, and you know, give them more agility, really, in focusing on meeting their customer needs instead of focusing on managing their technology. Absolutely, nobody wants to be doing that. Thank you so much, both of you, for joining me on the program today, talking about what IFS is doing, the future of field service, how you're partnering, truly partnering with customers. It's impressive. We talk to a lot of vendors and a lot of customers and I, I definitely am seeing some unique differentiation here. So thank you so much for sharing your insights with me today. Thanks thank Lisa. You. Appreciate it. For my guests, I'm Lisa Martin. You've been watching theCUBE live from Miami. We've been here all day. We thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time. <laughs>